We live in a world where hope has been in short supply, hasn't it? You know, only a couple of years ago, we had the pandemic. We've had a massive financial meltdown that's brought huge pressure to people. And then, of course, at the start of 2022, President Putin of Russia decided to start a war in Europe and invade Ukraine. And now there is fear filling our newspapers and media on a daily basis. I have lost track of how many stories I've read in recent months wondering, will this be the month where Putin presses the red button and starts nuclear war? In fact, the good old BBC, uh, one of the most favourite stories I've read of late on this, where the other week they had a story uh, reporting on the fact that the price of old 1950s nuclear fallout shelters has rocketed on the real estate market as people are trying to protect the future. And I meet more and more people who I think are struggling with despair, given what's gone on with plagues and pandemics and Putin and financial turndowns. You know, where do we find something uh, to give us hope for the future? Well, to be very honest with you, if you uh, are an atheist, if you are a secular person, if you believe that atoms and particles are all that there is, there is not a lot of option, given how despairing and how difficult life looks right now. Really, there are three options open to you. First thing you could do, if you're an atheist, you could embrace the despair. You could say, well, despair is, is all there is, right? We know that one day, you know, I will die, one day my descendants will die, one day the human race will become extinct, one day the sun will expand and swallow the earth. Everything ends. Maybe it ends tomorrow when Putin presses the red button. If not, it will end in a few centuries or a few millennia time. Everything ends, so embrace despair. And in fact, one of the most famous atheists of the 20th century, his name was Bertrand Russell, uh, made that very point. In a very famous essay called A Free Man's Worship, he concludes by saying, you know, given all that we know of where the universe is headed, the only surety, the only sure foundation is unyielding despair. So build your life on despair, because at least that's certain. Cheerful, cheerful stuff. You can see why he did not have a second career as a motivational speaker. But other atheists are as grim. Albert Camus, one of the most famous French atheists uh, of, re of recent years, uh, he too said something similar. He said, given all that the what universe throws at us, the only philosophical question is, why not suicide? Why not just end it all? Because at least at that way, you escape the despair. So you could go that way. You could go this despairing route. Pretty grim, but at least it deals with it. If you don't want to go that route, what else is open to you? Well, option number two, is to ignore what's going on. Stick your head in the sand, put your fingers in your ears and shout la 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 loudly, you know, watch endless Netflix uh, things, drink lots of alcohol, eat pizza, try to avoid and distract yourself from observing what's going on outside the four walls of your house. That will work for so long, but reality will catch up with you. If Putin presses the red button, then you are toast. No amount of Netflix reruns and pizza boxes are gonna help you. One day, the next pandemic may come across the horizon and take you out. Distraction may stop you thinking about the problem doesn't solve the problem. And the third possibility I suppose you might do if you don't want to embrace despair, you realise that distraction is a folly. Third thing you could do is you could defy the universe. You might say, well, the universe is meaningless and despairing and it's going to destroy me eventually, but I'm going to shake my fist at the universe. I'm going to take a stand for justice. I'm going to, you know, wave a Ukrainian flag. I'm going to protest what Putin's doing. I'm going to fight the pandemic and help the poor and all this stuff. Great. Well done. Love those choices. The problem is over here, we have Vladimir Putin, who's made an entirely different set of choices to be mean and monstrous and vicious. And who gets to say that your choices are any better to his? In a godless material universe, nobody cares. The universe certainly doesn't. So fight all you like, but really it's, uh, it's feeble and it's futile. So if you are an atheist, those are, I'm afraid, the alternatives. But here's the thought for you. What if atheism isn't true? What if we do not live in a purely material universe? What if lying behind this universe is a God who brought it into existence? Well, that shifts the whole perspective, doesn't it? And in fact, in one of my favorite passages of the New Testament and the Bible, in, the, in 1 Peter chapter one, Peter writing there to an audience of Christians who are experiencing tremendous suffering and persecution. Christians in the first century, they knew that the world is a bit, a bit of a messed up place, but they had hope. And Peter writes them and says, we have a living hope based upon the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead in space and time and history. If Jesus rose from the dead, everything changes because we can have a hope and a confidence that even though, yes, life is chaotic and suffering and bad stuff happens and why that does in a world with God behind it is a different, bigger question. We've done that in other short answer videos. If there is a God behind this universe, that gives us a different perspective and a resource for dealing with all that the universe throws at us. 
one of the most, another famous atheist from the previous century, Friedrich Nietzsche, once said this. He said, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. In other words, if you figured out that there is something bigger than you behind this universe, then you can cope with everything that life throws at you. Nietzsche tragically never found it, but maybe you can. Start by taking a look at Jesus and the Gospels and ask yourself the question, is there more to life than just the material? 